Welcome to The Daily for Tuesday, August 10th with Greg Lawless. I'm Jason Seguini and Greg, the big game today, U.S.-Brazil at the New Meadowlands in New Jersey. What are you expecting to see in this game? Well, I think we're going to see a lot of things from Brazil especially. They're going to come out and try and entertain. They have to show something that was not there when they were playing under Dunga. New coach Mano Menezes says that this is a team that is, is young, is vibrant, and is going to try and entertain and play this sort of samba style. However, Let's think about the U.S. a little bit, and what the Americans are going to look to do, I think, is go out in a flourish, as it's most likely, it seems, going to be Bob Bradley's last match in charge of the U.S. national team. There isn't really any true indication that that's the case, but rumors out there swirling that this might be his last match, and that, uh, you know, whether he goes to England, we're not really sure. He's now rumored to maybe be in the running for the Aston Villa job, mm -hmm. but you almost feel like there's a celebratory aspect to this game here in the, in the Meadowlands. Yeah, kind of, uh, uh, you know, look back at the World Cup mm -hmm. and, and, you know, reward these players, I guess, for the, for the effort that they put in. I think on the field, though, this is a tough matchup. I mean, obviously, when you yeah. play, see Brazil on the field, this yeah. is a tough matchup for the U.S. And the U.S. defense going against guys like Neymar and Robinho out on the wings, it's not really, um, I guess, th it's not the kind of style that's suited towards the U.S. back line. It's going to be tough for the outside backs to defend against these It guys. is, and you have to imagine that uh, Jonathan Bornstein might get to start out on the left side. He'll be going up against Neymar. Now, who's Neymar? He's an 18-year-old kid for Santos. The guy has, is already almost a legend. There were calls for him to be on the World Cup team actually this year. However, you know, there's a lot more flash to him than substance. There's a reason why he, as an 18-year-old, has not been bought by a European team, right. whereas Alexander Pato, who's now with AC Milan and also with this team, he was snapped up as soon as possible by a European massive giant in Milan. Well, that's the other part of this triumvirate, you could say, I guess, in attack for Brazil is Pato up yep. top. But, I mean, you look at it, hopefully, for the U.S.'s sake, you know, they're able to contain that mm -hmm. and get, get something going. I think if you're the U.S., you just don't want to give up that early goal. You want to get away from that pattern you, that they you had. You don't, and I think a key for this tonight is also going to be Omar Gonzalez, the Los Angeles center back. I don't know if he's going to get the start. However, I do think he's going to see some time. This is a good, young, up-and-coming defender that we really need to see on the international stage, right. Jason. It's, like, it's about time that he gets that chance. He showed really well against Real Madrid about, uh, over the weekend. Now it's his chance, I think, on the international stage. Now, going forward for the U.S., it's still going to fall to the old mainstays. I think it's going to be down to Landon Donovan, who's going to be the, the catalyst in the attack. I'd like to see Edson Buttle in there in a way that we didn't see him in the World Cup. Mm -hmm. I'd love to see him get a start, maybe see what he can do against the, some of the strong defenders that uh, Brazil did bring. Well, also going along with this game was the uh, National Hall of Fame induction ceremony, and guys like Preki, Thomas Dooley, Bruce Arena mm -hmm. uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame is a significant accomplishment. Yeah, you know, a couple of legends, both from MLS and the U.S. national team. Obviously, Preki, one of the longtime superstars of soccer here in the U.S., now the coach for Toronto FC well deserving of him to get into the Hall of Fame. It's about time, I guess. And, mm -hmm. and uh, Thomas Dooley, for all that he did in the 90s for, for the U.S. national team, coming in the 94 World Cup from Germany, and, uh, and then eventually playing for the Columbus crew and doing well there. And what can you say about Bruce Arena? I mean, he's, he's not just a Hall of Famer. He's kind of like a, a galaxy of fame, if you will, for mm -hmm. what he's done with the national team and now, right now, with the Los Angeles Galaxy as well. Well, Greg, uh, wrapping up for today, I wanted to get to one email that we got because it's on a subject that we even touched on on the radio show yesterday. Ashley Huffer uh, emailed in, how come Stephen Leonard wasn't the player of the week? Uh, his goals were more clutch than Jeff Cunningham's. Well, and you know, uh, basically, he deserved it because he pulled his team out. Uh, I'll from tell you exactly why I think, and this goes back to what Simon Borg was talking about in his Borg Ultimatum on ET Radio, and it's about the voters. Let's remember, Stephen Leonard got his goals when on Thursday, mm -hmm. not on Sunday, and so the voters were voting on Monday, and they remembered those two goals from Jeff Cunningham on Sunday as opposed to all the good work that Leonard did coming in as a sub to help Columbus get over uh, Philadelphia in their game. And, you know, think about it. I agree with her. Stephen Leonard, if you're going to go by the two-goal rule wins you the player of the week, then Stephen Leonard deserved it a lot more than Jeff Cunningham. But don't go by the two-goal uh, well, rule because we Freddie well, Montero deserved player of uh, the no week. No, he didn't. David, David Ferreira deserved player of the week. Right. But... Regardless, I agree with you that, uh, that Stephen Leonard deserved it just as much as, as anyone. All right, well, thanks for your email, Ashley. And, uh, as always, you guys can email us at thedaily at mlssoccer.com. Uh, again, if you missed the radio show yesterday, Extra Time Radio is available on iTunes and Buzzsprout. Just search Extra Time Radio. That's all we have for today. We'll be back tomorrow.